thing I think that we as people really fail to recognize and fail to grasp is how much of our external world is based on how we are as people. And in saying that, I don't just mean that, you know, you are a reflection of, or your world's a reflection of who you are. I mean that the way which you feel, the way which you kind of say everything around you is how it's at times going to be. And I think especially about how we connotate ourselves, that's what we see in the world. So I think we have to somewhat, you know, find ourselves in everything in order to truly understand what it means to, you know, be a part of that. Realize the external nature of the internal world. Like a lot of the stuff we deal with from the day to day is an internal thing. It's an internal happening. It's not so much external as it is a reflection of our internal, a reflection of how we perceive the external in a way. And I only not necessarily just recently realized this, but I, I found the application of it in many ways. Like, I feel like we only can carry so much stuff in our hearts that we have for ourselves, you know, or that we're feeling in, in some sense. It sort of works in the same way of projection. Like, I feel like a lot of times we project people's or our, our own feelings on people's behaviors and actions. Like, if someone you know, reacts to your outfit or something, you might react in an envious way or you think they're envying you or hating or something like that. But that's just because you have that capacity for hate in your heart. If you yourself don't think that she would ever, you know, intentionally mean something like that or wanted to come off that way, I don't think you would perceive it that way. And saying find yourself in everything, I mean, realize how much of a reflection, how much you can gain from looking at the world around you and how you relate to it and how you contribute to that perception. Um, I can't say I necessarily found a way around it, but I think the realization itself is, is cause enough for you to start moving forward and change that path because, you know, it kind of grounds you. It kind of humbles you. and It makes you realize that, you know, some of the negativity you face every day, some of the, the way in which you feel is, is really governed by you, you know, it's not your fault, but you have to take responsibility for it in many ways. Like, your life is your life to live. This is your experience. This is your forefront. This is your battleground. This is what you can do. No one else can live your life for you. And I keep saying that over and over again because we all have our own potential. We all have our own capabilities. We all have our own lives to live. And no one else can live your life for you. You know, they can make attempts to, but they can never be you. And there's something special about being an individual in that sense. There's a certain power that comes with just being yourself because you're beyond connotation. You're beyond comparison. No one is similar enough to compare. We're all different in our own special, unique way, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe good ways, maybe bad ways, but regardless, you are different. You are special. It's about coming to that realization that, you know, you have your flaws too, and you have things that can seep into your character that will make you negatively react to the world around you. One must be a sea in order to not be polluted by by dirty water. That's in uh, Nietzsche, Nietzsche, Nietzsche quote. And it resonates with me a lot because I realize that, you know, sometimes we just have to broaden our capacity for negativity, broaden our capacity for positivity, and broaden our capacity for self love in order to truly get gain and. and get a understanding for how we are meant to be for how things actually are meant to be it gets very easy to allow you know certain stuff to throw you off track to make you feel as if what you're doing isn't worthwhile or you're not in the same headspace as you were previously and i think part of that is the relation to the past the relation to that previous self where at which you were you were on top of things but I think like that realization that you were on top of things means that it's humanly possible and you have done it, you can do it again. But it's also comes to the realization that you're not that person. That person is you. You're right now. You're not that person, but that person is you. You know, it's about take not taking yourself out the present, but bringing the past into the present. You know, realizing that you can have those same feelings, you can have those same experiences over again if you wish to. Maybe in different facets and forms, but regardless, you know, I don't think it's inachievable. I don't think it's unattainable to get that kind of thing over and over again. So it's about the rapid realization and rapid progression of your own idealism and sticking to that to a degree, but also allowing it to evolve.
because one thing I realized is that we as people are, you know, very much governed by, I don't know, the longevity of things, how things ought to be and how we want things to be in a way. And the more we allow ourselves to kind of go over those loops and loops and loops again, the more we become desensitized to certain stimulus, especially if we're not practicing anything like affirmation or gratitude or just being grateful for anything and everything in our life. It gets really easy to get complacent with those feelings. And it's really about gratitude, really about understanding the privilege it is just to wake up in the morning. You know, you woke up today and you take up space, you might as well use it. You might as well use it. And and I feel like life is one of the most sacred things in this sense. You know, I'm kind of getting off topic, but in general, like life is a very sacred thing. And in seeing yourself in everything, it's about realizing the life that exists with everything. You know, everything's a part of you and you are a part of everything in a way. And you have to realize how much you can learn just from interacting with other things, whether that be your environment, circumstance, or whatnot, because it doesn't have to be people. You know, negative things can happen in your life and you, you can just react to them negatively or you can react to a regular thing negatively. Like you can drop a pencil, you can stub your toe and, and it can change the course of your whole day. I know those are pretty like minute little tiny things, but they really can. You know, I think we, we carry a lot of the weight of the negativity of our minds and, and, and things and we connotate how our life is. Instead of building it or connotating it positively for ourselves, you know, if you don't connotate it, it'll connotate itself. That's what I feel like. If, I feel like that works with yourself and everything else. If you don't put a connotation on yourself, someone else will. And then you have to live by that connotation unless you're mentally strong enough to, to break free from it. So I think it's very important to have a, some sort of groundwork, some sort of foundation upon who you are in order to ground yourself in that reality. You know, the universe doesn't pick sides in that sense. It doesn't pick sides, you know. So you have to choose your own side. If you're not choosing yourself, then how can you expect anyone else to choose you? You know, that's what I feel like it's really about finding yourself in everything. Finding yourself in everything as in like, you know, you don't have to always look within to find yourself. Sometimes you can look without. I think part of learning who you are is your interactions, is your reactions, and is it how you, you know, interact with the world. And from monitoring your interactions, monitoring how you are, monitoring how you interact with people, I think we ought to find a lot about ourselves. Like, you can see the parts of yourself that need help. Like, if you're seeking validation from other people, you can tell that you need validation for yourself. If you're feeling insecure around other people, you can tell that you're not secure. I feel like all of these things are put in place in order for us to gain more understanding of ourselves. And that's truly the, the point that I see. Not to say that it's the only point in existing, but it's a great point. You know, part of self-development, if you're watching this video, I'm guessing you you either like hearing me out or um, you're trying to self-improve like I am. And once you come to that realization that, you know, you sort of bear all the responsibility, then you have to move forward. But it's not to say, you know, be super hard on yourself in regard to that. I think we have to give ourselves a lot more grace than we currently do in our society because we hound on ourselves about our, our negative things so much that it becomes us instead of uh, highlighting our positives as well. We allow one negative thing we've done, one negative interaction, one negative thing that's maybe taking place in our life to change the course of maybe a, a, a great couple of weeks or something like that. You know, we allow some forms of our expression to paint our entire character. You know, one avenue of our expression to tell us exactly who we are all around. And that's not always the case. And that's almost never the case. You know, the way in which we interact, the way in which we manipulate the world around us is very contextual. I don't think it's ever just a one way thing or every just a it looks one way. You know, it's about everything. Sometimes it's this, sometimes it's that. But all in all, it's about getting back to yourself, you know, finding your way back to yourself. And I think that, you know, finding yourself in everything helps you find your way back to yourself because it helps you realize the ways at which you are not being yourself, the ways at which you are, you know, existing in a way that's unbefitting of your opinion of yourself or who you want to be or how you wish to become. 
you know, I can say there's no past self to overcome and there's no future self to achieve, but I think we should all hurt, hold fervently in our mind that, you know, we want to get better and we're content with, with the change that ensues from wanting to get better. Uh, all that to say that, you know, make sure you're trying to look, not trying to look, make sure you're present enough to see the ways in which you are being expressed in everything around you. The ways in which you are projecting things into your external reality and how they tell you a lot about yourself. Um, if you made it this far in the video, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. I'm getting more time on my schedule now, y'all. Be expecting a podcast or two. I'm thinking... I'm thinking Tuesday night. I'm thinking Tuesday night, and I'll shake on it. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So expect that Tuesday night. Uh, all in all, uh, keep hitting me up, y'all. I'm loving the, the work y'all sending me. Like, after I said that in one of my videos, people kept sending me, like, their music leak, their drop boxes, everything. So, uh, keep doing that. I love seeing the way y'all at which you guys choose to express yourselves. And I'm sorry if I'm not uh, constantly on my DMs. I'm not really. I try not to be on social media that much. Like I limited my Instagram to 15 minutes a day, but uh, sometimes I go in there just to check the messages. So uh, all in all, thank you. Everybody, keep being themselves. Uh, keep being authentic to yourself, and also keep being intentional with how you care about yourself and how you think about yourself, because that's truly what you know creates how you interact with the world and what you see from the world and how you find yourself in everything. You know, if you become something beautiful, you'll see everything is beautiful. Yeah. Thank you.